Another game, another new signing. Canadian goalie Matt Climey is the latest member of the Steelers, providing an experienced import option between the pipes. He's not ready to ice just yet, so Tom Barrasso will stick with Jackson Whistle tonight, following his solid showing in the win over the Panthers last weekend. Yuri Gula and Chris Lawrence have both been released, but more new faces could be on the way soon. Coventry are the visitors for this Halloween game, and you can forget Candy. They want points to take home with them tonight. They'll gain the offensive zone. Dowd trying to play it back in front, it was well defended. There's a good stick there from Ainsworth, the puck isn't out of the zone, it should be though now. Falls nicely for Hache, but the Steelers take it straight back and they've got options here, left and right. Oh, and they tried to play the pass and it was broken up. Ainsworth got back and got his skates in the way and here come the Blaze the other way with the shot on whistle and the rebound and the score for the Blaze! It's Lake who's got it, and after a chance at one end for the Steelers, it's the opening goal for Coventry at the other. Yeah, Owens just holds the puck a little bit too long. Coventry break it up, and Lake plays it back, and a good shot through. Just kind of comes off whistle a little bit strangely. Whether there's a lot, oh, there's a ton of traffic in front of the net there. Davy Phillips going down, I think, looking to block the shot, doesn't get it. Kind of gets, gets through him and surprises. Whistle a little bit and he doesn't quite get his body square to that shot and it pushes it into the bottom of the circle and obviously with a hard charging Lake who had made the pass driving the net after the pass that puck goes straight onto his stick and all he has to do is bury it into the open net. Lake assisted Ainsworth and it was Ainsworth who made the defensive play to break up what was looking like a three on one for the Steelers. Options left and options right. They went for the pass to the right. And when it was broken up, Blaze had numbers going the other way. Steelers have spent plenty of time this season playing from behind. It's not a position you ever want to be in, but it's at least a position they're used to. And a position that they have won from before, including last time out here against Nottingham on Saturday. Shot is off target from Nicky Forrock. It'll be picked up here by Joyo. That one is snapped over the top. It will reach Ferrara. Steelers make sure that it doesn't. And now they try and send one through on the breakaway chance. The Steelers are in. The Steelers have scored. Buzio has leveled things up. Yeah, it's just what Sheffield needed. They missed the one chance going the other way. Just before Coventry scores, and Buzio finding himself in behind the Coventry defense. You can see the move here. He just brings it back and just slides it five hole. An excellent little move here. You can see just goes inside out, forehand to backhand, like he's going to move around the, the net binder. He just spreads the wickets a little bit and just pops it on the ice five hole. And Sheffield have tied it up here with nine and a half minutes left in the first period. Copperover gets his stick to this one. And again, the battle will commence behind the goal line and now in front of it with Della Rivera. Buzio moves it inside, the shot comes in, the save is made, the rebound attempt. Oh my word, that was so close. McGrath had the effort. That one's been deflected, save made, rebound, is it in? Have the Steelers got it across the line? They think they have, the referee says they haven't. Well, I don't know. That's but we're going to have to look at it again. Yeah, they're going to have a look at it, but Della Rivera is celebrating here, but you know it's, it's just below us here, and it's tough to see. The opportunity that came in just before it on the backhand was off the post. I thought it was close. It really was. But it's the follow-up shot that it saved, and it's sitting there. Do the Steelers poke it across the line? Do they force it in there? Oi, oi, oi. It's <laughs> wow, that's close. <laughs> the stick is in the way. You can't actually see it from that angle. You know, if that stick isn't there. Tom Danell has looked at all the angles. And he says no goal. Not quite where the Steelers wanted it to be. And we'll gather it back in in this corner with Johnson. Has to skate through the referee to retain possession. He's done so, trying to feed it across. There was no opportunity to get a shot away. 
plays into the offensive zone. Brinisven, really nice hands. Oh, what a lovely goal that is. Absolutely superb. Yeah, Aaron Johnson just gets stood up here. You can see as he comes through a little bit of a inside and then a quick pull back out right there just around the outstretched stick. Johnson's in pretty good position here. He, he doesn't lunge, but he crosses over. And the Coventry forward pulls that puck back across his body, gets it back into shooting position outside. Whistles right side and puts it just inside the post above the pad. Johnson for Buzio, back inside, now back to Johnson. First Steelers power play of the night. They're seeking the goal that will make it 2-2 and it was nearly provided by Johnson who was sneaking in. Shot was off the outside of the goal. Oh, what a slap shot that is! And the Steelers do have their power play equaliser. Yeah, what a hammer that was from Johnson. You know, redeems himself on uh, on a little bit of miscue on the one-on-one -on -one where he gets beat for a goal. But I'll tell you, this one here, this is an absolute cannon. You can watch how he pulls it into position here. And then he just absolutely rifles out. And there's no chance for the Coventry netminder as this one goes up and around by the years. You can see the windmill coming up, but there's no chance for him to uh, get his glove in position to get a hold of that one. Just the response the Steelers were after. They make the most of Hashi's minor penalty to get their equalising goal. And they're straight back into the offensive zone again, driving the net, and the net is free. As you see it again here, Johnson just pulls it into position. You can see he just gets it around the Coventry defenseman and watch this shot go. It's up and it's by the netminder before he can react. Like I say, a little partial screen, but Aaron Johnson gets absolutely all of that. Great to see a big, heavy shot come through from the big defenseman. Johnson assisted Buzio as the Sealers equalize for the second time tonight. Buzio has a goal and an assist now. And the Blaze leads have lasted a minute and five. In two minutes 25 they're trying to get back in front here and they have straight back at the Steelers it's Ainsworth back and forth this the second period and the Blazer in front 3-2 now yeah and the Coventry fans are loving this one Hansen there just finds the trailer you can see the good hard shot Davy Phillips goes down to try to block the shot he gets tied up a little bit early going down you can see him spin around and then Lake continues right through whistle as it's a great wrist shot release from Ainsworth as he picks top corner backhand clearance goes a long way down the ice oh Blaze got a little two on one developing here they move it across oh no, it's there they fired it in and they have got a two goal cushion now it ends up being a two-on-one through a high play, and Hansen doing a good job. It almost looks as though Whistle thinks he's going to go short side, and a quick roll to the wrist right there. You can see him just snap that bottom hand over. Hansen does a good job and just brings it back into the feet of Jackson Whistle as, again, a little alley-oop play goes up and over top of the Sheffield defense. and Steelers into the offensive zone. Line down block didn't work. Phillips has skated on. There's the shot. Oh, and it's come back off the post. Three times tonight the Steelers have hit the iron. Crowd in front of Cop River. And it's blocked by bodies in front. Steelers still have it. They'll snap another one, and that's blocked as well. Clements off the glass, but not out. Steelers keeping it in. They're all over Coventry right now. Puck is still live. Oh, and it's been stopped. My goodness. Not sure what it hit, but it was heading goalwards and then suddenly it was heading off to that far side. It's been a great shift from the Steelers, but can they make it count? Save made, rebound chance, puck still there. It's across the line, and if ever a shift deserved a goal, it was that one. 
They were relentless, and Coventry eventually broke. <laughs> For sure, and it's Aaron Johnson, Johnny on the spot. Great work by by Phillips and Phillips and Westerling down low. Look at the, 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 the pressure, and Coventry just can't do anything about it. Coventry Netminder actually has control of this puck before and bobbles it out after Westerling put the puck on net, and Aaron Johnson just keeps going and going and going, and now we're here in a game again, a goal. But again, important thing here, 30 seconds. They've got to get control off this faceoff and not allow Coventry to clear that zone. Steelers win the draw, six on four. Shot through, it's bobbling, it's sitting there. Can anyone put it in? Can the Blaze get it clear? They can't. It's bouncing around. Steelers will get onto it, but time is against them. 15 seconds. Played into the crease and then out the other side. Can the Steelers lift it in? Yes, They've yes. scored! They've scored with 10 seconds left. Blaze aren't happy. Copriver is furious at the officials. But the Steelers have tied it up in an almighty scramble. Yeah, I think it looks like it's Matheson sneaking down the outside. And then the referees are having a little discussion. I think it's Copper for thinking, does he have control of the puck? Owens does a great job twisting and turning. There it gets put out in front. And there's a kick. And then now right here, where's the puck? At no point does this netminder look like he actually has control of the puck. We'll have a little better look at it here. But again, there's no. it's right there. It's never underneath him. It's never a dead play. Matheson pulls it out. They're going to review it. But I don't know what they're going to review it for. No goalie interference. The and goalie the, doesn't look like he has possession of the puck fully. And, and the call on the ice is goal, so there must be something definitive for them to change their decision. Pretty quick decision here. The goal celebrated for the second time. 59-50. We have reached the end of regulation and both teams take a point. And yet again, the Steelers home game will go into overtime. Three on three. Next goal winner. Whistle. And the Steelers have possession. Ambitious pass and it'll find its way all the way through to Pitt. Feeds it across. Was he taken down in the middle? No, he wasn't. They get it back to Buzio. Drags it inside. He's trying to score the goal. Oh, it was blocked by the defenseman with the goal gaping. And, and then the interception. The Here come the Steelers. Netminder's out. Steelers have scored and won it with O'Connor. <laughs> Unbelievable. The, the net was completely open on the play before that. O'Connor reads the play, jumps up. And Coventry... End up 4-2 ahead of going into this third period. Lose it in overtime, 5-4 on a fantastic comeback by Sheffield. Never giving up in this third period. And you can see the Coventry netminder goes to come out on a poke check. O'Connor just sees him at the last second there. Gets the puck to one bobble. And there you can find it wide open. And he puts it right into the middle. Thirty-eight seconds into overtime, the Sheffield Steelers are winners. Tom, congratulations! How did you win that one? Uh, working way too hard. Um, we uh, we really got off our game in the second period. Allowed them to play to their strengths, and uh, their transition game ate us alive in the second period with, a, with just foolish mistakes. But thought the response in the third was much better from the first shift to the last. I thought we dominated the period. Uh, kept pressure on them continuously and really just battle at the net, and that's how the goals went in. So it's, it's rewarding in that regard that, that hopefully they learned a lesson, stick with what we're trying to do, and it'll be successful. I noticed, especially with the equalizing goal, with 10 seconds to go, that the way they celebrated it, it clearly meant a lot to them. Yeah, you take a team that's been beat down a little bit at the beginning of the season, they're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel as far as getting better and showing improvement and putting points up. And that's really what we're working for every day. And for them to have the belief in that and confidence in it and work as hard as they are is, is, uh, is gratifying. And that's twice now you've come from behind late, three minutes or so against Nottingham. Ten seconds there. What, what do you put that down to? 
Uh, not giving up in conditioning. I think we're working really hard. Uh, we're pushing the pace of the games uh, to the max, really. I, I think our players are working hard in practice to stay well conditioned. And we're wearing teams down. Uh, really, Coventry iced the puck maybe six times in the third period. That's a good indicator that they were pretty tired. So for us to stay on them, hunt the puck down was, was our goal, and we did a good job with that. We talked about Ben O'Connor before the game, and you certainly know a bit about him now. He's, he's just made this building erupt, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a very smart player. Um, he read that play perfectly coming through the neutral zone where the puck was going, stepped up, intercepts the pass. And the impressive bit is to avoid the goaltender that's charging out at him. I mean, he did a really good job of puck control and body control to put it in the empty net. Uh, big addition to our team. Aaron, congratulations. Another fantastic night here and another gutsy character performance. Yeah, uh, you know, it's great, uh, like you said, character for our team. Uh, it's going to bring a lot of confidence when you, you're able to come back, especially in the third period, and then to win in overtime, you know, uh, second time we've done that lately. So, uh, like I said, it's going to bring a lot of confidence to our team to, to never give up. For the first 40 minutes, it was a little deja vu. We were creating chances, just couldn't put them away and found ourselves 4-2 down. Yeah, uh, you know, it's frustrating because we've hit some posts. Uh, there's been some big saves, but uh, like I said, I think as a group, we stuck to our game plan. And, uh, you know, fortunately, uh, we didn't stop playing. And in the third period, it, it turned out to be in our favour. Talk us through that, the dying moments. You know, five, you know, Tumple's a goalie, six on five, then the penalty, then it's six on four. And uh, Mark's goal was so important. Yeah, um, Mark's been hot, you know, for the past two, three weeks. Um, it's just, again, guys being around the net and not giving up. You know, I think that was kind of our, uh, our issue in the weeks prior to this, was we were, we were getting the pucks to the net, but there wasn't anyone there. So uh, that's something we pride ourselves on now, and uh, fortunately it uh, and turned up in the back of the net. Four days ago, you wouldn't have had a clue who Ben O'Connor was. I think you kind of know now, and he writes his own scripts, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was awesome. Uh, I was talking to his father and congratulating him when he when he did sign, and he said it was like Christmas for him. And to be honest, it was like Christmas for us as well. I mean, to bring a, a guy that's you know proven uh, he can play in this league and contribute offensively, and uh, you know obviously brings a great attitude every day. So we've been very fortunate to have him, and uh, you know hopefully uh, he can be here for a while. What do these two character wins, two overtime wins, do for that dressing room? A uh, huge confidence booster. Like we said, uh, you know, we've been behind throughout this whole season and we weren't able to, uh, to come back and win games. And now we're in a, in a position where, um, you know, we, we stay confident throughout the game, whether we're up or down. You know, we know we're able to win hockey games. And finally, a man of the match performance from yourself, two crucial goals. In fact, the D got, what was it? They got four of the five tonight, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always great when the D can contribute. Um, we've had a... Uh, We've been a little, uh, you know, had some bad luck lately uh, scoring. So anytime the D can contribute and help out uh, offensively and help the forwards relax a little bit, I think it's, uh, it's going to be huge for our team. I said finally a moment ago, but finally, finally, the crowd as well. They were with you every inch of the way, weren't you? They were willing it. You could feel the, you could feel the support. It's completely changed around. Yeah, the emotion in the building has been, you know, unbelievable. Um, especially going through the the dog days there, where you know, uh, didn't look like there was any. Uh, any daylight or any sunlight in the future, but they stuck with us and uh, you know, now it's paying off and hopefully we continue to, to bring them wins.